So a strange voice from deep space, a mysterious object named the Three Eye Atlas has just sent a signal aimed directly at planet Earth. So is it a cosmic coincidence or is it the first whisper from something that is not from this world? Our next story explains as to what this radio signal is which has created the buzz on the internet. On October 24th, astronomers tuned the Meerkat radio telescope for a gamble. The radio telescope in South Africa's Karoo Desert detected what may be the first microwave whisper from an interstellar object. The astronomers wanted answers from interstellar darkness. What they caught was beyond expectation. A faint irregularity first appeared in the data streams, a pair of sharply defined frequencies that stood apart from the background static. The Meerkat array, situated in the Karoo Desert of South Africa, had been engaged in its usual monitoring of the radio sky when operators noticed the anomaly. The pattern held steady for several minutes, unwavering, showing none of the distortion or scatter typical of interference or random noise. The data were verified across multiple receivers. Calibration checks confirmed that the frequencies were genuine and external. The source appeared faint yet stable, its coordinates aligning with the trajectory of a known transient object moving rapidly across the inner solar system. The coordinates of the signal matched the path of 3I Atlas, an interstellar body traveling through the inner solar system at extraordinary speed. Recorded on October 24, 2025, the event soon drew attention across observatories worldwide. The signal's twin peaks, 1.665 and 1.667 GHz, aligned precisely with the absorption frequencies of hydroxyl radicals, OH, molecular fragments produced when ultraviolet sunlight breaks apart water vapor. For 11 uninterrupted minutes, Meerkat's instruments registered the same repeating pattern before it faded beyond detection. The observation marked the first verified instance of hydroxyl absorption originating from an interstellar object, confirming that the chemistry of water observed in distant systems operates under the same physical laws that govern our own. The discovery rippled through the astronomical community before sunrise. Within hours, data from Meerkat's 64 dishes were analyzed and cross-checked against known terrestrial frequencies. Every indication confirmed the source was celestial. The emissions matched the exact coordinates and motion of Comet 3I Atlas as it raced past the Sun at 244,600 km per hour. To radio astronomers, the detection was thrilling yet disquieting. The clean, twin tones stood out against the cosmic background with almost unnatural symmetry. In raw spectrograms, the signal appeared as two luminous lines, evenly spaced and unwavering. No random static, no scattering, no terrestrial interference. Eleven minutes of immaculate order. The numbers suggested a natural process, yet the presentation carried a sense of orchestration as though the cosmos itself were performing a precise experiment for Earth's audience. Almost immediately, the news leaked beyond observatory walls. Social networks and news outlets framed the event in the language of mystery. A voice from deep space, one headline read. Comet 3i Atlas sends a signal to Earth. For a public accustomed to science fiction, the story was irresistible. But behind the poetic phrasing, scientists were careful to separate observation from interpretation. What they had seen was real, a microwave absorption line from hydroxyl, OH, molecular fragments produced when ultraviolet sunlight breaks apart water vapor. And what it meant was still a matter of physics, not philosophy. As attention around the detection grew, researchers also awaited additional data from beyond Earth. The high-rise camera aboard NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter had captured side-view images of 3i Atlas in early October offering a rare opportunity to study its structure from another vantage point. Those images, however, remained unreleased for more than 40 days due to the U.S. government shutdown that had temporarily halted NASA operations. Now, as the shutdown comes to an end, astrophysicist Abby Loeb has expressed optimism that the long-delayed images will soon be made public, providing vital context about the object's jets, motion, and possible fragmentation and potentially deepening our understanding of the interstellar visitor that has already reshaped scientific discussion. The earliest analyses of the radio data pointed to a clear physical mechanism. As sunlight struck the object's icy surface, 
volatile material was released and broken down by ultraviolet radiation, forming hydrogen and hydroxyl radicals. These OH molecules absorb and re-emit radiation at specific microwave frequencies, precisely the 1.665 and 1.667 gigahertz lines captured by Meerkat. The result was a distinct chemical signature of water, consistent with processes observed in known comets within our own solar system. If the forthcoming high-rise images are released as expected, they could reveal whether jets, surface fractures, or fragmentation accompany that activity, offering visual confirmation of the same reactions that produced the radio signal detected from Earth. That in itself was momentous. 3I Atlas became the first interstellar body ever known to broadcast the spectral lines of water. It proved that the chemistry of life's most fundamental molecule exists beyond our solar neighborhood. The discovery linked us to a molecular heritage older and wider than the sun. Every planet, every comet, every icy body drifting between the stars could share in this universal chemistry. Yet the elegance of that conclusion did little to quiet speculation. The signal's precision, its consistency over 11 minutes, unsettled even seasoned researchers. Hydroxyl absorption is usually diffuse, varying with turbulence and motion. Here, the emission was almost too clean, like a carrier wave unmodulated by noise. Some suggested the comet's rotation or geometry might have aligned its molecules in an unusually coherent pattern. Others whispered of possibilities they refused to publish, that perhaps the geometry was too perfect to be random. Amid the swirl of conjecture, one scientific interpretation began to take shape. Avi Loeb, the Harvard astrophysicist widely recognized for his research on interstellar objects, explained that the radio signal from 3I Atlas was not an artificial broadcast, but a natural byproduct of chemistry. According to his analysis, the frequencies corresponded precisely to hydroxyl absorption lines, a signature created when ultraviolet sunlight breaks apart water molecules in a comet's coma, leaving behind reactive fragments that absorb radio waves at specific wavelengths. Loeb emphasized that the detection represented a milestone in observational astronomy. It was the first time Earth had captured radio evidence of hydroxyl radicals from an interstellar object a feat that demonstrated how far the sensitivity of modern telescopes had advanced. Meerkat's precision had allowed astronomers to distinguish the faint fingerprints of water vapor chemistry occurring billions of kilometers away in an object born under another sun. To Loeb, the significance of this signal was not its potential mystery, but its proof of consistency across the universe. The same physical laws governing matter on Earth appear to govern the molecular behavior of a visitor from another star. The way water interacts with light and radiation, its breakdown, excitation, and spectral response followed the same patterns observed in comets of our own solar system. This universality, he argued, transformed the detection into a quiet revelation. Nature itself speaks a single language, and across cosmic distances, it repeats familiar verses. In that light, 3I Atlas became less a harbinger of alien intent and more a scientific messenger, carrying confirmation that the chemistry of life's most essential molecule, water, is woven throughout the galaxy. The signal's perfection was not evidence of communication, but of continuity, the echo of physics itself resonating unchanged between the stars. Even if the signal was natural, it forced humanity to confront the boundary between curiosity and belief. The discovery touched a nerve because it resembled the very thing we've long sought, a pattern, a call, a sign that we are not alone. In a follow-up piece titled, What Do You Believe About Extraterrestrial Intelligent Life Beyond Earth? He asked readers to examine their own expectations. Do we only recognize meaning when it mirrors human intention? Or can the universe communicate through patterns that emerge without a sender? As debates unfolded, data teams across the world reanalyzed the raw meerkat spectra. Observatories in Europe and Australia pointed their antennas toward 3I Atlas's fading trajectory, hoping to catch a repeat. None succeeded. 
the comet was already moving outward, beyond the inner solar system, its weak tail scattering sunlight into invisibility. The signal had been a one-time event, a brief chorus that played and then fell silent. For radio astronomers, that made it even more precious. A single, clear detection can define decades of theory. This one suggested that interstellar comets carry detectable microwave signatures, encouraging a new generation of experiments. Plans emerged to integrate radio monitoring into surveys that normally track asteroids in transients. Some scientists proposed automated listening windows for every future interstellar visitor, a standing invitation for the universe to speak again. Beyond laboratories, the story entered popular imagination. In the public's mind, 3 i Atlas transformed from an icy fragment into a cosmic messenger. Commentators compared the signal to the WOW burst of 1977 or to the enigmatic behavior of Oumuamua in 2017. None of those earlier events proved extraterrestrial in origin, but each reawakened the same quiet hope. Humanity's fascination is not with proof, but with possibility. The notion that intelligence might echo somewhere beyond the horizon of our instruments. Even seasoned scientists admit to feeling that pull, the subtle, irrational thrill that comes when numbers on a screen begin to behave as if they mean something. Those who were present at the control room of the Meerkat Array that night remember the strange stillness that fell over the team. The monitors displayed the same two peaks, unwavering, repeating like a heartbeat. For 11 minutes, conversation stopped. Each person knew the rational explanations, yet beneath the discipline of procedure, there was a sense of witnessing something purposeful. It was not the kind of excitement that comes from discovery, but a more ancient feeling. The suspicion that the universe was, for a fleeting instant, aware of being observed. And then, just as suddenly, the rhythm ceased. The frequencies faded back into noise and the instruments returned to their steady hum. Scientists resumed their calculations, checking for errors, verifying alignments, reducing the signal to its measurable components. But something about those 11 minutes lingered. The data were archived and analyzed, yet they carried an emotional residue that no equation could erase. What remained was a story of a night when the cosmos seemed to pause and acknowledge its listeners, an experience that would follow those researchers long after the comet had vanished into darkness. In purely technical terms, the detection expanded our grasp of astrochemistry by measuring the intensity ratio between the twin OH lines, researchers can infer isotope compositions within the comet's water, offering clues to the temperature and radiation of its birth environment. Early analyses hinted that the isotope ratios resembled those in solar system comets, implying a shared galactic reservoir of water ice. Such results suggest that the ingredients for life are not local accidents, but galactic norms. The event also refined how telescopes will listen to the cosmos. The Meerkat data provided a new benchmark for calibrating sensitivity and filtering interference. Future observatories like the Square Kilometer Array will use those lessons to sift through deeper cosmic noise, improving the odds of detecting not just chemical signals, but perhaps one day something more structured. Yet what lingers most from the night of October 24th is not to chemistry, but the feeling of contact that delicate overlap between measurement and meaning. For a moment, equations gave way to wonder. Scientists, journalists, and laypeople alike found themselves sharing the same thought. What if this was the first time the universe reached back? Rationality soon reasserted itself. The models worked, the data fit, the mystery dissolved into molecules. But even as the rational explanation prevailed, a trace of the question remained. Not because the event defied science, but because it reminded us that discovery is never purely mechanical. Each measurement is an act of attention, and attention transforms data into story. Loeb himself summarized it best. The universe is under no obligation to speak our language, but it does speak. The hydroxyl signal from 3i Atlas may have been chemistry's whisper, not consciousness's, yet it carried the same resonance. We are connected through the laws that shape every atom in existence. To hear that connection is to glimpse our place in a living, chemical cosmos. As months passed, the comet receded beyond Jupiter's orbit, trailing a ghost of vapor that soon vanished into interstellar night. Earth, meanwhile, kept listening. Datasets were archived, new observation protocols were drafted, 
and a generation of astronomers was quietly transformed by the experience. They had learned that the line between noise and message is thin, and that sometimes the difference is only attention. In the vast silence between the stars, signals will come and go, each demanding interpretation. Some will be natural, some perhaps not. What matters is that humanity continues to listen with both skepticism and awe, to measure precisely, yet never lose the capacity for wonder. Comet 3i Atlas may never return, but its brief whisper changed the way we look outward. It reminded us that the universe is neither mute nor indifferent. It is alive with frequency, pattern, and possibility. On that night in the Karoo Desert, amid static and starlight, a small array of dishes caught the rhythm of a passing wanderer. Whether water or will that spoke, no one can yet say. What endures is the echo, a soundless reminder that somewhere, between science and imagination, the universe may still be calling, and Earth, for once, was listening.